This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. And I'm back again, this time for another RPG episode for February and March. This is my third episode for this week, so if you were looking for board games or either of the two zine quest episodes I have I have one left to do I already did one so there's gonna be two for the week then uh, check in on those you can just click on my name in the channel and you'll be able to find those under uploads they'll be right at the top it's gonna be another busy one there's a lot of stuff going on the difference between zine quest and the regular stuff is a lot of it is color there's dice there's 3d printable things um, there are a lot of RPGs also on this episode but if you were looking for something in the very low cost area it's all going to be black and white specific missions or specific upgrades zine quest has tons for every different type of rpg that you could be playing and that's just the promotion that kickstarter is doing right now we're going to focus back on just the regular rpg stuff that i normally cover no zine quest here so um just look around for those episodes on the channel because they're there Speaking of channel stuff, if you can like, share, and subscribe, that would be very, very handy, especially if you're finding it useful to be having such a complete experience on my channel of everything that's coming out on Kickstarter that you could be purchasing, because nobody else is going to do it. They're going to trim it down to their tastes. I say, why not just have it to your tastes, and you guys can just check out the bottom, and you'll see on the timeline the thumbnails and the chapter links so you can jump ahead to the games as well as in the description so you can just see what everything's out there and click away so that you can go directly to those campaign websites and uh, talk to the developers or whatever it is you need to do it's all about being convenient for you and a lot of people aren't doing that I don't think anyone else is doing all of that so if you like that experience click like subscribe it helps me out thanks first up we got orcs they are a uh, vital part of any fantasy campaign. They come in lots of different flavors. Sometimes they have more pig-like faces. Sometimes they're more human-like. You always need some type of orc if you're going to do fantasy. Um, from Tolkien stuff all the way on. This is the second version from Medusa Miniatures. It is a very short campaign. So if you like what they've got going on, then you have to act very, very quickly in order to pick it up. There's going to be 28 total uh, different sculpts that you can uh, choose from them. And uh, this is the second one, so there is a previous release from Medusa. They always do these very short uh, campaigns, and you can check out their website to find out uh, what other things they've already taken care of, come out with, and uh, you'll be able to print these off yourself, as many as you need for the Horde. And then we have a very unique thing that Morkborg does that the other RPGs don't necessarily do, and they have uh, records, actual vinyl records that come with music that can be played while you play the game. The uh, record <clears throat> booklet, uh, container, whatever you want to call it, sleeve, as all of the rules and different things for you to play this particular game. And then you would use the, the record itself just to set up the atmosphere. It also functions as a GM screen. So there's a lot of utility all thrown in together with what would otherwise be seen as a bit of a gimmick. Uh, an MP3 would work just fine playing off a phone, but not for Morkborg. <laughs> That is, uh, it's a type of game that is all onto its own self, trying really hard, even though it is like a, an old school revival type of uh, game uh, or a dungeon crawl, like a lot of other ones are. It beats to its own drummer. Then we have a game that probably should be part of Zine Quest, but for whatever reason, they didn't decide to make it one. This is The Last Valley, and it is uh, about finding a little town. It's a 30 page. Um, booklet uh, basically and they've already managed to fund which is surprising and uh, it's about going after some guy who's got a Minotaur as a, a guardian and doing what you can to take over the town so there's lizard men hobgoblins witches and undead all kinds of crazy stuff that you would find in uh, whatever type of game you're gonna play this was specifically designed to run with old school essentials so it's in that format it's a half size book five and a half by eight and a half 32 pages if you just need something simple to play in a night or two then maybe this will be something uh, you'll be interested in it uh, has a new class added to it called the vaulter which is uh, someone who lives underground and has armor swords and spells from an ancient culture then we have a setting in search of a system this is the tattoo punk anti-bible and 
I copied and pasted that directly from it. Sometimes they put anti-Bible, sometimes they put anti-Bible. Um, okay, whichever way, is it before or is it against? They can clarify themselves. Um, the idea is the world that they've created has these extra um, tattoo things that go along with it. They have their own like Ten Commandments of tattooing that goes along with it. Um, if you are going to use, I think, what is it, Natasha's Cauldron? Uh, it's in one of them uh, that recently came out, some uh, or Unearthed Arcana. With the new tattoo rules for 5e, um, you can probably implement this into literally anything um, to go along with it. This is another one that is just a quick zine, but did not want to be part of Zine Quest for whatever reason. Um, it has You have a, a very simplified uh, character sheet there on the right if you want to use it that way. Um, I mean, I think most of these systems have tattoo rules to go along with it. So maybe this is more interesting just to use the Ten Commandments of it to give you um, different uh, uh, reasons for people to be uh, traveling around. One of them, we have, we all have common skin, and all of the skin is common until marked. That's one idea. Throw that in there. Maybe you want to put it in a mark borg, and you would need some minis to go along with it. This is Forbidden Psalm. This is a bunch of stuff that is inspired by the aesthetic of mark borg. And uh, I see no reason why not. You have a crazy looking wendigo type multi-limbed uh i don't know creature of the woods evil deer type of thing going on there uh different types of cultists and other cool things that are going along uh nobody looks happy everything looks dismal sounds like morkborg but if you need something a little more generic for your dungeon then you can check out the fantasy verse dragon's gate they have all kinds of cool things including a dragon headed specific gate that you can uh it uses a portal, different things you'd find in various dungeons, as you can see there, treasures and wall mounts and other statuary and all that kind of craziness. So uh, if you're already going to have things revved up for your 3D printer, you might want to check this kind of stuff out to go as well. Um, there's no real minis or anything that go along with this. As far as I can tell, there are stretch goals that will include that if it gets funded. It is uh, It has to get funded more <laughs> in order to continue for them to come out with um, the summoning, I think is the only ones that are uh, actual um, like enemies or things that you could put. They might also be statuary. Um, there is a really cool impaled thief that's thrown in there that might be the highlight of all this stuff because you don't really see that too much in that much detail. And uh, the uh, dragon-headed uh, portal um, on an Elegoo Mars looks pretty fantastic. It could use a little more uh, deeper details just from the photography, but you can do that with an X-Acto knife uh, to make extra scales and that kind of cool stuff. So it's up to you if you want to have a very thought out atmosphere to go along with your dungeon. But not everything is fantasy. Sometimes you got to get in a car and go see if you can help people. This is Torque, and it is a rules light tabletop game where you play a driver. And that is someone who's supposed to be, as they put it, like Mad Max. I have not played Death Stranding or Redline, but they say that it's similar to those games as well. Um, I'm going to guess it's the first Rad Mad Max movie where things were like like a little bit green still before it all went desert. <laughs> and um, it just happens to be in a post-apocalyptic world. And you're car-based. Uh, I know there's Gaslands, there's a bunch of other types of... Uh, car based games out there and maybe this will help bring into um uh you know the a different view or some other added benefit or added gameplay um they have other trades that you can be one is called a modem which is someone who brings social media to communities maybe it's more like a post office uh an aggie which must be for agriculture because they're a botanist a speaker box somehow they bring noise and music so maybe that's just like an entertainer style. It's got its own kind of world. It's got its own kind of lingo to go along with that world. It's very much like Mad Max. So if you're into it, if you want to play uh, something that's uh, a little different, definitely not fantasy, then maybe Torque is for you. Then we've got 100 colorful characters. These are um, in a very cartoonish style. I don't know if it necessarily will fit anything that uh, goes into D&D. 
but the stat blocks are all there on the backs of every single card. You can check it out for yourself. It looks more like something from a roguelike video game, like Shovel Knight or one of those types of things. Uh, if that is the experience that you want, um, then great. I don't think it necessarily will fit with any of the official D&D minis. If you're using that as part of your um, world to create NPCs and all that, you'd have to get like another set of chibi characters uh, 3D printed to go and fit this design. But that part's up to you. If you're not using minis, if you're doing theater of the mind, if you're doing something else entirely, they will have digital assets available for you as well, 512 by 512 pixels. So if you did pick this up and you did want to use it, uh, you can set it up on your virtual tabletop to uh, share the assets backward and forward. A lot of the virtual tabletop stuff does look like it would fit really well into here. Uh, a lot of the things I see on RPG Maker and a lot of um, other uh, RPG worlds, it seems to fit pretty well. So it just depends on the type of gamer you are, the type of DM you are, uh, or GM you are and uh, if it'll fit your world. Um, Big Eye Small Mouth maybe, or some other fantasy style uh, system that uses cutesy characters. Uh, maybe that would be a better fit aesthetically, but you can just flip the card over and use the character on the back because they have different personalities to go along with it. If that's not your case, then maybe you need these fantasy busts. That's uh, one thing that you can do here. They are fantastically detailed half people. So um, sometimes it's nicer to be able to have a little bit larger character for the scale, but within the size of what you would have had a full size uh, mini to go along in. So it's easier to paint or anything. Or maybe you're like Rob Liefeld and you just don't draw feet or work on feet or whatever. That's fine too. Um, you get a ton of them. They all look pretty awesome. They're fairly well sculpted and uh, there's a lot of personality, especially you got the barbarian there holding the orc head or troll head or whatever that is. Um, Mohawk dwarves, skeletons, kings, wizards, demons, whatever it is that you think you need, you can see there in the bottom. There are quite a few of them and uh, they're fully pre-supported so you won't have to mess with it. So check it out if you got a uh, STL printer. Sorry, I keep saying STL printer, SLA printer and uh, you uh, like painting. And then we have the Black Lotus of Thalaron, or Thalarian. Uh, this is a Dreamlands adventure. The Dreamlands of who? Lovecraft himself. Why isn't there Lovecraftian stuff already in 5e? Well, there was a lawsuit with Chaosium that said that they had the license and they had to take all of the Mythos stuff out and you have to put it back in yourself. They can't do it at Wizards. But you can do it here um, in this story. The Dreamlands is one of the greatest places that Lovecraft ever created. Lovecraft's only real friends were other writers, and they would sit there and put other weird things from each other's stories into um, different spaces. Robert E. Howard was a friend. Um, basically anyone that was a writer in the 30s and 20s was probably a friend of his. Um, with all his crazy rants and everything else, but he did love his cat. So there are places in the dreamlands that are also all about cats. If you want a great book to read, um, The Fear Institute by Jonathan L. Howard is not necessarily required to read the whole Ioannis uh, Cabal uh, story uh, setting, but it would be helpful if you did read Necromancer and Detective beforehand in order to jump into this third book of the Fear Institute where it takes place entirely in the dreamlands. It's a fantastic read. This may be a great opportunity for you to have the, all of that fun that's in that book thrown in to uh, your adventures by picking up here from uh, from these folks. Switching gears to Diesel Punk, we have the M B1 Armored Walker Velocipede Dragoon. Um, side is what this looks like it would fit best in but i'm sure there are other games that it would fit pretty well in as well different walkers and machines and things that would take place in a i don't know maybe a soviet era um where they win the uh, cold war um lots of different reasons why you would want a walker instead of a tank uh, different types of terrain obviously much slower if you watch battle bots they have not been doing well with the walkers uh, so much as with the uh, the regular wheels and all that kind of stuff, but that doesn't mean that sci-fi has to uh, to be a particular way. It's what was the show in the loop? I think is what it was. Um, is a weird future world that maybe this stuff is for. I know they came out with an RPG game to go along with it, but maybe you just enjoy it. Maybe you just want it for your own purposes or what you have in mind. A game that this diesel punk stuff will work well for. If you do have a game and I haven't heard of it, throw it in the comments. We'll find out. 
And we got some play mats for you. These have different textures on them. Um, they're all the same texture, but you know the the different biomes is what it, I'm trying to say. So you can have aquatic, you can have forest, you can have snow, you can have desert, you can have lots of different uh, seasons and things going along with it to play with whatever tabletop game you've got. Is it a war game? Is it a uh, skirmish game? Is it a strategy game? Is it an RPG? Whatever that is, if you need something that will fit pretty well, uh, made out of the I believe neoprene material, then uh, maybe this thing will work for you pretty well. Um, you can get it different sizes and let them know what you want. Then we have the first expansion, Xanadu, for the Nibiru role-playing game. And this is a weird, like, anachronistic future world that is somehow also based on ancient Mesopotamia. This has won some, uh, or at least been nominated for Ennies in the past. And um, if you like something that is weird in space, <laughs> then maybe this will work for you. You're trying to figure out memories as you go through, and that's what the Memos system is on the left-hand side. That's what makes the game unique. Um, you use points to kind of describe who and what you were as you go through this weird world. Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting way to explore uh, a whole new system, everything about it being completely foreign to what you'd normally experience in a typical fantasy setting and if you get burned out or bored or anything like that with playing the same types of characters um, with Starfinder or Traveler or you know D&D &D and uh, Vampire and all that give this one a shot have a little more depth and exploration to the character and who knows maybe you'll even find a little something more depth about yourself then if you like swirly dice this is an opportunity for you to pick up some new ones this is the Dragon Soul dice they have liquid cores, and as you um, you roll them, they continue to roll because they have glitter and things inside and a, and a different type of medium. It's a little like a snow globe. Um, they're fairly expensive because they're hard to make, but uh, you know they look pretty when you're throwing stuff. Some of them they call spin downs, so uh, you can use them as life counters instead of tossing it as a d20, and it just makes it easier for you to keep rolling because it keeps the numbers in a different configuration instead of having... Uh, the matching sides on opposites, you uh, like you would have on a normal D20, it just makes it easier to uh, to use it as a counter. So if you'd like either of those things, Kenneth Moore the Third has lots of different colors. I just wanted to show these ones to you because um, there are a lot of color options. You can read them, which is nice. And uh, the 20 is in a fire kind of thing, so if you're going to throw it as your fireball die, then uh, it would fit pretty well. Um, yeah, take a look. Sometimes it's difficult to re figure out a reason why you would adventure and why not just do it for money. This is the book of bounty and treasure hunts and it gives you a minimum of 20 already created adventures and they're going to make another 50 plot hooks and 40 full color maps. They're going to have a minimum of 120 pages. So uh, you'll have reasons to go out and hunt things or people whatever noun you are going after at the time, and uh, it'll kick every adventurer's butt into uh, into that call to action. So uh, it is difficult in a lot of ways for people to take what everyone wants to play and create an experience that gels really well for everyone, and uh, a nice unique piece of treasure or a very hard person to catch that is very dastardly Maybe you want to catch them and turn them in for the money. Maybe you want to catch them and join them. Whatever the case is, then uh, there are lots of options available to you in here. And uh, it's already been tested. This is just the hardbound version of something that's already come out. So uh, at least it's been... You could check and see what uh, they've already come up with and get some reviews and that kind of stuff regarding the quality. All right, it's time for some proper love craftiness. This is uh, Lurkers from the Deep, so you can set up your hole own New England town with lighthouses and old decrepit buildings and that same kind of style. You can almost build your own Miskatonic University if you got enough creativity and time. You got all kinds of cool things. There's like a Ouija board counter tracker thing. <laughs> There's uh, um, different cards and whatnot to go along with it. And you can use these in any type of game you want. Um, it, there are quite a few uh, Call of Cthulhu style games. These ones come in an old VHS tape uh, case, which is very nice and retro, but it's not 20s, you know, it's, you know, <laughs> it's 80s, maybe 70s. Um, 
there are some fish folk to go along with it. So if you're in uh, Innsmouth, then uh, you can uh, find some people that are like the half breeds of Dagon. There are also some full on fish folk, uh, you know, the things that you could find along with it. Um, there's also some street stuff. The uh, terrain pack has um, street lamps and um, trash cans and things that you might find in that kind of world. Um, I think it's for the pulp, uh, specifically the pulp skirmish game, but you can use these anywhere. I mean, it's, you know, there's plenty of uh, Cthulhu based games to go by. Then we have the Gaia Complex, and Complex is the best way to describe this. You have a little bit of Neuromancer, a little bit of Vampire, a little bit of Cyberpunk, all kinds of craziness going in there. The AI that has taken over everything instead of Wintermute is Gaia, um, and you have different weird types of upgrades, Supernaturalism, all kinds of crazy stuff <laughs> that's happening. A game of Flesh and Wires. That is a very compelling uh, tagline to throw in there. It looks pretty cool. It looks like a Blade Runner kind of world. If you're into any of that, if Cyberpunk did you wrong and you don't want to play Cyberpunk Red or one of the other games that already exists, then uh, maybe this will help you out. Maybe, maybe it'll be a good way for you to uh, transcend your uh, Vampire the Masquerade game into something that's more futuristic. And uh, if you if you're done LARPing, if you're done uh, playing with the uh, the gothic world and you want to push it into something unique and different. Then further into the future we have Gordonok and this is going to be, or Gordonak, however you pronounce it, um, a standalone RPG it takes place using the Panic Engine and it is for use with Motherboard. Not Motherboard, Mothership. <laughs> Sorry, Motherboard is what I need to replace on my computer. Um, but uh, no, if you in, are into mechs, if you're into flying around in space and uh, going through um, just weird wrecks and uh, weird types of uh, problems that could be out there, this might be for you. One of the weird things I see, it looks like a Pantera there on the, the book on the right hand side. I don't know if it is, if De Tomoso has anything to do with it, but uh, my dad used to collect those, so it has that 80s, late 70s kind of feel to it for me. Um, you have different types of playable species. Uh, they all have weird names, so you'll check it out and go from there. But uh, if you're a fan of Stargirl and uh, Stars and Stripes, if you're a fan of Gundams, if you're a fan of whatever, then uh, maybe you'll uh, enjoy having mechs thrown in uh, as you fight alien uh, weirdness. And then we have Magnum's Tome of Unshackled Spells. There's a hundred spells in here, and they're saying that they want to make both good and evil spells. Um, I never considered the spells themselves to be good and evil, just the implementation of it. So uh, here's a way for you to fill things out, maybe add that in. Um, there's stuff for moon druids, sand mages, lava wizards, mind control bards, elemental rangers, whatever it is that you've been trying to come up with that you weren't able to find. There's a hundred different options. I honestly think that it would be uh, interesting to just make generic versions of what spells can do and then throwing in flavors of options so instead of having like uh, chain lightning or acid bolts or everything is you just have this is an attack you can flavor it how you want it's going to be for this amount because you're going to use this amount of mental fortitude and energy in order to make it happen so roll the d6 and it'll have this effect or that effect um, maybe that's something for sorcerers uh, but it just seems to me that maybe that would be the direction to go so you wouldn't have to have so many specific spells in the future. Until that time, you're going to need books like this to be able to tell you all kinds of cool things, that other things that you can do, and maybe, maybe it will help uh, you figure out who your character really is by having these, albeit similar, but just different enough types of spells and things that are thrown in there. And then we have Prehistoric Gods. These are STL printable files that take place in, uh, sorry, pre-Hispanic, not prehistoric, but in South America, the gods and things that they would have. My favorite is the Spakli, or Kipatli, however you want to put it, because I love the pose. I've been trying to figure out the shark dragon that D&D uh, &D put out in a very small, only from like July to August, um, level one to three campaign system that was supposed to be part of like League of Legends. 
and they had this one character in there that they did not provide any artwork whatsoever for and I've been trying to come up with a pose that was evocative that would both say dragon and shark at the same time since sharks are so streamlined that Kapakli, I'm stealing the pose but it is a really cool way to have a uh, crocodile, alligator, or caiman god since there are saltwater crocs I believe um, there are American crocs in South America um, and Cuba and all those types of things so they obviously would have had worship of them horses were a new thing so they obviously uh, would have been referred to um, in a different way horses were indigenous to North America for a long time so were camels but uh, eventually they pretty much died off and the European ones were brought over so uh, if you've been looking for something uh, all in that pre-Hispanic world for the indigenous peoples, it's a good opportunity to get your 3D printer running. And those of you that like stories but don't like dice, we have Everway, the mythic role-playing game. This is the 25th anniversary. They say silver anniversary, but it came out in 95. I'm just saying end of 2020, close enough. And uh, you use three different types of resolution, karma, drama, and a deck of fortune in order to tell whether things happened or not. You're supposed to be able to tell basically Campbellian myths and there's nothing wrong with that. People find all those very interesting and have for thousands of years. So uh, if that's the type of story you would like to tell, if you like the idea of the mechanic, not having the dice, having a little more control based on what should happen based on karma or what would be cool based on drama, or just throwing all caution to the wind and using the unique fortune card, which I'm guessing is a little bit more like a tarot deck, then uh, this would be for you. Um, totally different than just running in and punching things. I like the idea of that, having a little bit more um, variation in your conflict resolution. Then we have, and I don't even know how they can not end up getting sued. This is the Apocalypse Future Imperfect, folks. Uh, Christy Grayskull has also a bunch of um, 3D printable things that don't just look like the maestro from Marvel Comics and Mortan Joe and uh, the other folks from Mad Max or the Planet of the Apes people. They also have uh, available for you things that look like G.I. Joes and Thundercats and they look remarkably like those licensed properties. However, just a little bit different. And there are a couple of zines, if you watch the board game episodes, that allow you to use any minis from anywhere. Uh, and a friend of mine was asking, why isn't there like a Thundercats um, skirmish game that they could play right now? Well, you take a little money here, you take a little money on the zine, and you got that all for yourself. You can just print it off. The uh, license fees be damned. So uh, if that's what you're into, Get it while the getting's good before anyone else finds out about it. Up next we have Hexplorer, the magnetic dungeon tiles. Here's the thing. They named it Hexplorer, but they're not hexes. I think that confuses people. The idea is great that you can have these magnetic tiles to help you very, very quickly throw together a dungeon. You could even stick it on the refrigerator afterwards. Whatever it is that you want to do. Um, you can stack them on top of each other with the different pieces. Everything will go pretty well together and uh, speed is key. You can throw the minis on top, whatever other types of terrain and things that you've got, and it will fit pretty well. Um, you no longer have to draw too many things out. Uh, maybe just keep track of uh, certain areas for line of sight or other types of uh, effects, and uh, go from there. I like the idea, don't like the name, but hey, you know, that's a small price. A weird name, trying to explain it to somebody. That's, that's their own problem, right? If they went like, eh, I thought I was getting hexes with these. Nope. Then if you need some weirdness, strange foes are 3D printable. They're there for uh, 5e. You got the stat blocks and everything there. I don't know how to describe these guys. Uh, it is a small bestiary of homebrew weirdness. <laughs> um, like polyp looking weird guys. Uh, there is a satyr. So maybe you could use it if you have... Um, What's the one? The Mythic of... I can't think anymore, guys. This is like my 120, 110th or whatever review in the last 24 hours, so my mind's a little blinking. But the Mythic Odysseys of Theros. There you go with the satyrs. Um, different dragons, biaki looking guys, uh, whatever the case is, you want to name them. They also have a few uh, houses 
that you can use. Um, uh, they have a different uh, Kickstarter that's going along with it as like a partner. If you need any of that kind of stuff, if you want anything that's just plain weird, check out Strange Foes. Then we have Under the Seas of Vodari. This is aquatic adventuring for 5e. We already had Ghosts of Small Salt Marsh putting you on the water. Now we're going down into the water. Even Icewind Dale Rhyme of the Ice Maiden has one adventure where you can ride a whale down into the depths and see stuff that's underneath the sea. This has 12 new options for player races, uh, legacies, whatever they call them now. Um, one I can't pronounce, sea dragons, uh, sea dwarves, uh, I don't know how that part works, merfolk. Merfolk I think have already been as, as a, a player option, so maybe this is a new one. Sirens, Tiburons, and Vodas, all that business, whatever they are. There are sea elves already from an unearthed arcana that you can throw in as well. Um, there are subclasses such as Path of the Wild Seas, College of the Deep Dreamer, College of Sunlit Seas, an Ocean Domain Cleric, uh, Circle of the Sea for Druids, Way of the Dancing Current, Oath of the Waves, Leviathan Hunters for Rangers, something called the Dread Mask, a Scavenger, and uh, the School of Blood Binding. So lots of cool things that are in there, different types of armor, magic, and all that fun business. I think it's neat if you have folks that are ready to pull on a full Aquaman, if they're fans of the sea, if they want to try a third dimension to try to think of how space would work uh, when they're battling, here you go. Now we have another new thing, Crystal Punk for 5e, and this kind of makes things push into a weird futurism. Uh, so you still use the 5e mechanics, but now you're solidifying souls and magic and things into crystals as batteries. I mean, it's obviously not how crystals actually work, but um, you know, a lot of people seem to think that for whatever reason, putting rocks on their body gives them energy. Um, you have different classes, such as the evolutionist, which is a thing for cyborgs and mutants. You have uh, different subclasses, obviously, uh, quick draws and school of infiltration. You might even be able to push these down in their timeline instead of being something that is magic in tech. Um, you can just utilize the different characters uh, other ways. It would be not worth it if you're just pushing the same exact types of characters and calling them different into a, a new timeline, but you're still the same type of assassin or, or wizard or whatever, just calling one or two words different. Um, so uh, I don't think they necessarily do that. They have weird locations and things from a post-apocalyptic world and other things to consider such as cities and other weird types of backstories and worlds where technology can defeat magic. So if that's what you're interested in, you want something totally new but in the same kind of mechanics, take a look at Crystal Punk. And then we have another entrant for Immortal Kings. I think just about every week we've had a new one. This is the Towers of Light. Um, it has its own aesthetic. It very well fits with werewolves and other kind of crazy things. It's almost like a halfway point between uh, Kingdom Death and uh, other types of uh, fantasy uh, role-playing games. So if you're interested in any of it, you like the aesthetic of it, break out that resin printer and print away. Um, take a look at the other releases that they've also come out with. Just click on the name uh, James Franzen and you'll be able to see all of the stuff that he's already created and you can talk to him and see if you want to pick up any previous releases that you may have missed to go along with this Immortal Fantasy or Immortal King's Fantasy world that he's creating. And we probably have the biggest campaign of anything that's going on this week. This is Seeker's Guide to Twisted Taverns and uh, Eldermancy is... Uh, they run, I think, one of the big YouTube channels. I forget which one it is. They've got other things that they've come out with before. And they're a high-quality product. They like coming out with lots of uh, gimmicky things like bobbleheads and um, mugs and other stuff that is your value-added experience. Uh, coaster system for creating the tavern, which is a good idea. Uh, as you can see there, it will help you uh, just lay it out and make a quick one so you don't need necessarily big 3D uh, printed pieces and you can make them all unique and because it's a very cheap way of setting that together so this book is filled with all types of weird bars and maybe just maybe one day if you're a big enough fan you can make one of these bars for yourself but they happen in weird places and for weird reasons but everybody everywhere needs a little drink once in a while and then if you don't want to build out your tavern that way you can buy the terrain tinker which allows you to design 
your own buildings and print them out. Um, this is some neat little software. It's, it reminds me of Neverwinter Nights, the software tool set that was built uh, there. So you can just lay down different tiles and very quickly put something together. If you're fancy with uh, uh, or good with 3D uh, stuff, uh, AutoCAD, Tinkercad, anything like that, then uh, I think you'll be able to kind of figure out how this works, especially if you know game engines and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, just don't build anything too big for your, your table. <laughs> That's, don't go too nuts with it. But uh, it looks like they have a fair amount of options for most people to be able to enjoy um, whatever crazy thing that they're trying to build um, that you aren't able to find on one of the, I don't know, 200 or 300 <laughs> uh, minimum campaigns over the last year, uh, maybe 500 over the last two years that uh, offer terrain uh, equally well. But it will help you maybe plan something out and plan out an adventure to go with it, even if you don't want to print it yourself. Then the third or fourth week in a roll, we, uh, row, we have a brand new virtual tabletop system. This one is Let's Roll. Uh, it seems to have an extensive amount of testing already put into it, which is very good. Uh, you never really know how much has been put in unless they tell you. I'm not sure necessarily which one's best or which one's not. They have a lot of different features, Fantasy Grounds, Roll20. Uh, they've been around for a long time. Um, tabletop Simulator is also very popular with a lot of folks. And then there are many others that have come out over the last six months or so. Um, you just have to... Take a look and see if any of these fit your needs that the other ones don't or if any of the free options uh, don't quite work for you and if this makes things a little bit better because you may have found that you like being able to uh, play virtually i know that if i had a group i would find it easier to be able to just meet up and play online um, just because then i don't have to drive anywhere <laughs> in los angeles that's a uh, a big problem um, and you can just play, you don't have to get dressed, you know, whatever. So um, it'd be a lot easier for me to regularly show up to a game if I was able to do it virtually and then maybe once a month we all get together. Uh, but once a week or twice a week or whatever we get together online and play, that would be a lot easier for me. So maybe one of these days I'll take one of these virtual tabletops out for a spin. Then we have the Panarium. These are pawns. 3D printable, half uh, selections, busts. Just like the other fantasy busts that we uh, showed off at the very beginning of the episode, but these ones have a little bit less detail, um, a little bit different variety. If you like the idea of using these half-sized individuals, then, uh, I mean, I think it's pretty handy. You don't always necessarily need a full uh, body, arms, you know, the whole thing. Maybe you want to make a chess set out of them. That's another thing you could do, because if you're going to print them yourself, you can print any amounts that you feel like you need. You can use it to replace other pawns that are in uh, games that weren't as successful or didn't have minis to go along with it. Uh, or you can just have a collection of your best fantasy friends that sits around your desk. I'm not judging you on how you use it. I'm just saying it's a different tool that you could use. And because of the scale, like I said before, it allows you to get a little bit more detail on the uh, faces, on the shoulders, on the little bits that are available because they end up being a little bit bigger because you have more uh, z-axis to work with and then we have an expansion to traveler mercenaries in the far future uh, traveler is a uh, space-based rpg system whereas starfinder comes out of pathfinder traveler's been around just as long i think i think a very very long time uh, i don't know the full history of it but i knew know a lot of folks do end up playing it um, yeah, it's, you know, space combat. And you're out there, out in the verse, in the darkness, looking at the stars. You don't know which ones you're going to wake up to next time. Someone puts in the call, go kill this guy. You're the mercenary that's going to go take him out. When you get there, what are you going to do? What's going to happen when you see the, the person that, that's the mark that you're supposed to be hitting? What if they're, uh, I don't know, feeding their kids or whatever? You're going to have a change of heart? You're going to have the whole conglomeration that hired you after you what is gonna happen if you decide to take on that bounty find out pick up the book so i was saying before you know if you wanted to design your own worlds and all that in the software uh to build 3d print you could 
otherwise you can just buy some like this uh, village STL pack this is from historical England you have churches you've got uh, different types of buildings if you follow the Shadowversity channel I'm sure you can tell you the names of each one of these types of buildings and the design for me I'm just gonna say that they're old and from England and uh, go from there some of them look like castles uh, don't necessarily look like it's a full bailey or anything like that but uh, maybe some grain storage or lookouts or whatever uh, things that might otherwise be attached to maybe an abbey convent whatever um, yeah they look pretty neat it'll fit pretty well in a lot of uh, other 3d designs that have uh, come out depending on which ones you've purchased in the past and uh, you can make a pretty good city out of the whole thing village hamlet whatever then we have our children and this is a 28 page rpg normally would be in the zine quest thing but i think because of the color pages it's not allowed into the zine quest so instead they made it into make 100 which was last month's promotion so there should only be a hundred of these if you want them it is a weird anime kind of uh, saga deal you play as four different classes of child paper iron sea and gem and uh, yeah it's typical <laughs> japanese inspired weirdness uh this one's from italy though so they have their own brand um 28 pages like i said everything you need to play out through this journey um it doesn't say if, you, if it's a solo experience or not so i'm gonna guess you need to have some friends with you to go along with it if i'm wrong sorry about that just didn't see that in the breakdown and uh yeah enjoy your your uh explorations as a uh, you know narrative experience and i just see it is there's two solo adventures okay so that broke that down but you can act in a cooperative manner and have a maximum of three people playing with you. So, hey, if you don't have four, you don't have six for typical D&D, maybe this will be a nice one-shot adventure for you guys. Following that same kind of weird vibe, we've got some weird worlds to 3D print for you. This is Sky Island. So uh, I think it comes with a complete set if you wanted to have a, a RPG to go with it you can have that but i really wanted to, to show off the buildings and the sky ships as you can see there there's lots of different variety you can paint it up any way you want now you do not necessarily need to put it into an environment that takes place in the clouds but if you want to follow the intention you can all looks pretty cool it's all very uh steampunk and we just honestly don't see a lot of steampunk going on so if you've been waiting here's your you know prayers answered speaking of prayers answered one of mine is this is Hailrot, and it is about the beowulf world i read the seamus haney uh translation of beowulf which is fantastic sardu have lost him a few years ago um but you get an exclusive miniature of grendel's mom in this one there's some playing cards that go along with it there's all kinds of weird crazy rewards beowulf is a hell of a hero he fights monsters isn't that what you want to do with yours uh, with your heroes and there's not a lot of magic it's just monsters um in his world and i could never really understand why more wasn't used to kind of flesh it out i did try reading it in old english because in the seamus haney version you have the older or middle english whatever it is next to the regular modern english and uh it's until i found out about Icelandic I couldn't figure out like is this even English like what's going on what are these words together and then for work I had to pick up a little bit of Icelandic at least learning the characters and I was like oh that's where these runes ended up in time so yeah it's uh I don't want to ruin anything but I think it's a world that has not been explored and I'm glad that somebody's out there making a Beowulf game that I hope is good then we talked about some sci-fi worlds a lot of them looked pretty cool but what are you going to do if you need those digital assets to bring it to your virtual tabletop that's what the sci-fi masters toolkit is all about you get these packages that one of them like a hanger one of them is, says heist so it'll have security and vaults and all kinds of weird things you get ships whatever it is you think you need in order to play traveler starfinder any of the other sci-fi type games the gaia one that was uh was there um that you think you might need so if you're 
inclined, you could also print these out. There's no reason why after you get the PDF or whatever that can be included in the virtual tabletop that you couldn't just right click and hit print um, if you needed it as a, uh, you know, a table piece. So there you go. And that's it. Yay, I made it all the way through the regular RPG stuff. So uh, it takes you through to the end of March for what's currently available. We'll always have more. So keep coming back, like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you want to do that kind of thing. But if you like, share, subscribe, the algorithm will know you want more for next week, and that will be helpful to everybody. Um, yeah, I hope there was stuff in here that you enjoyed. Feel free to comment on that. Uh, let me know how you feel about the Zine Quest idea. Um, it's just, it's a fecundity of <laughs> content all at one time. It's hard to navigate, uh, and it's also hard to find these gems uh, along with all the other cool stuff that's going in there. So uh, if you haven't checked it out, I think that the audience for this episode is the most inclined to also find something that they want to play in the Zine Quest episodes. So if you haven't checked those out, then uh, after this uh, comes up, you have at least one right now ready to watch. And the next one will be shortly after this one releases. If you're sick of my voice for the weekend, sorry guys, the campaigns just ended so short I couldn't... Uh, push it off for another week but if you have been enjoying with me thanks for sticking around i hope you guys enjoy your super bowl and uh don't